Welcome back, folks. We're going to be taking another look at Warlords Black Seas, and this time I have the French flagship, Laurent. So this was the flagship at the Nile, and unfortunately uh, it suffered a catastrophic magazine explosion and was sunk there. But in this kit we get a resin and metal model of Laurent. The sails and the wake sheets, the flag sheet, the rigging, the ship cart itself, and uh, even some acetate rat lines. So that should be everything we need to put the flagship of the French Navy together. Let's just have a quick look and see what we get then in the set. Oh, I don't want to forget that. That would be terrible. That in question is our little bobbin of thread. If you want to rig your ships, um, there's a comprehensive rigging guide in the Black Seas rulebook. Uh, I would recommend not doing it because I don't want to go blind tying thread around sails. But if you want an awful lot of historical accuracy, then definitely rigging is the way to go. Uh, we also have the metal pieces, all of our masts and uh, anchors. Come on. And even our lifeboats are cast in metal. In the core set for Black Seas, they are plastic. But for these larger pieces, they've been manufactured separately in metal. So what have we got? We've got a lot of flash. There we are. So what we're looking at, things like the anchor. Well, there's a lot of excess flash on them. The moulds themselves and the casts are very crisp. There's good level of detail on them and minimal, absolute minimal mould lines on them. So if we do have big chunks of flash like this, I can live with that if the actual model itself is relatively clean and well cast because they can be cleaned up with jeweler's files or knife. It will need straightening up. And on this you can see we haven't had slippage but we've a bit of a, a seam there from the two halves of the mould. Nothing major. We have the masts for the front of the ship on the prow. Yeah, so nothing unexpected there. Nicely detailed clean enough and enough flashing that you could ballast your ship. Then we have the actual resin piece of the miniature itself. So this is the main hull. So this actually had more guns on it than Victory. 118. And that is a beautifully cast resin piece. can't see any loss of detail or any issues with mold lines there. I'm just going to check one thing because I can see something just here. Ah, it was just a little, little bit of resin in the way. So it's not actually miscast there. Now that's one of the cleanest, cleanest pieces I've seen in a long time. We have the ratchet at the front here, which would, uh, be used to raise and weigh the anchors. Even steps down in the center of the ship there. It's a beautiful piece of sculpting. So the model itself is uh, exactly as you would expect it. Beautiful. Let's have a look at the, some of the paper parts that come with us. We have a very simple instruction sheet. Glue all of the metal parts to your resin model and then glue the paper parts onto that and you're done. I can accept that. It does explain if you've never used resin before how to actually use a piece of resin. Um, so they need to be cleaned up in some soapy water beforehand, but you should also do that with metal pieces to be fair. And then we have this bag of carbon components. So, let's have a 
a look and see what's in here. Packed for you by V. That's a new one. I didn't realize V for Vendetta was packing for Warlord. You see, I'm a musician of sorts and on my way to give a very special performance. What kind of musician? If you're trying to complete your set, one to look out for. We have the rat lines. Uh, these are printed on acetate, as you can see. So when you glue them to the side of your ship and run them up to your mast, you get that uh, network of ropes. So that's a nice touch. Much easier to put those on than it is to uh, string a whole rake of rigging. We have our wake marker, which is double-sided. So if you're in the Caribbean or the Nile or the Mediterranean, a bit bluer water than if you're off the coast of France or Britain. This also has your um, wound markers, I suppose you would call them, for keeping tabs on how damaged your ship is. And if you've not seen how you play, the wake marker, you designate what level of sail you were at, so you can be anchored completely, you could be at light sail, at battle sails, or at full sail, and this tells you how many times you turn and move in uh, your activation. Speaking of which, we have the actual ship card itself. So, here we see you have 120 ship points, and ship points are both your hull and your crew, so that's used for boarding actions as well as how much damage you can sustain before you sink. And they have a um, rally amount of 40. So when you reach 40 uh, ship points, when you've lost 80, that's when you have to make your first morale check to see whether or not you strike the colours. So that's, even though they've got quite a lot more ship points than some of the other uh, first rate ships like Victory, their morale check is much higher, so they're, they're less likely to stick around. They move at three inches, so that's your rate of knots, per sail, so whether you're light, battle or full sail. And they have a yellow chevron for turning, so that's a, a 60 degree turn they have, so up to 30 degrees in either direction per move. And then weapon wise we have four heavy, four light and three carronades for each of the um, broadsides. They have one heavy cannon on the um, stern and two on the prow and you can fire up to four times in your turn once from each position so you could move in fire broadside left and right and then as you steam out give them one on the way out so that's quite nice we have our seals so seals are thin cardstock so you just need to glue those to the masts and you just really need to glue the top of the sail to the mast. I find putting a little bit of a, a bend in it with a pen just so you get a curl to your sail helps accentuate it. And then they've actually um, illustrated these with shadow to the bottom and shadow at the top of the reverse. So when you're putting them on make sure you get the right side round because what you want is your sail to be curved so the shadows on the bottom at the front and at the top on the rear. And then we also have the French flags. So these are similar to the ones, from, in fact I think these are the same as the ones you get in the core set. You've got various French um, either long pennants or actual French flags themselves. They have privateer flags so if you want to run it as a privateer fleet you can by striking the Jolly Roger. They have a variety of ensigns so you can keep a mark of which ship is which. These are probably more use for the brigs and frigates rather than something like uh, Laurent because you're only really going to have one of those on the tabletop at any one time so you're going to know which one is which. Um, but yeah, they're a handy thing to have even just for doing extra detail work. So that is the French flagship Laurent. If uh, you're thinking about running a French fleet why not pop it down below or perhaps you want to go for uh, something a little bit more exotic take out a privateer fleet or take out the Spanish or Americans and play some of the War of 1812 why not let us know below L'Orient, because you're worth it
go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.